dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Barry Sullivan in Dark Dwelling, the United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you very much, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where all the motion picture greats join us in plays we know you'll enjoy. Our star is the popular actor Barry Sullivan, and the title of our story, Dark Dwelling. We'll have the curtain for Act One in just a moment, but first, here is your announcer. Choose the career that offers all five. The U.S. Army offers you these five keys to a successful future. One, a career of service to country. Two, the right job for you. Three, continuous training for planned advancement. Four, lifetime security. Five, travel and recreation. Yes, men, choose the career that offers all five. Find out about the five keys to a successful future at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. And now, once again, our producer. The curtain rises on Act One of Dark Dwelling, starring Barry Sullivan as Ben. When Ben returned to his hometown after a few years' absence, he was surprised at the changes that had taken place. So surprised, in fact, that he walked along the streets as though he were in a trance. It wasn't much wonder that he failed to notice a very pretty girl busily sweeping some porch steps. Hey, oh. what's going on here? Oh, oh, I'm terribly sorry. I, I hope I didn't get you too dusty. Well, I always associated brooms with witches, never with lovely young angels. Good day, sir. Uh, one moment, please. Very well. What is it? I, uh, I need your help. Desperately. My help? Yes, you see, I, I'm looking for a room to rent. There seems to be an acute shortage of reasonably priced places. Do you happen to know of any here in this neighborhood? Well, my, my aunt runs this boarding house here. She does happen to have one room vacant. Well, good. Lead on, fair lady. All right. Uh, follow me, please. Oh, Auntie. Oh, Auntie. No, Father. Well, Auntie, this, uh, this gentleman here is looking for a room. We have no vacancies. Oh, yes, we do, remember? The attic room. Well, all right. This way. <laughs> you get used to the steps after a while. <laughs> if we go much higher, I'll feel like an eaglet. Well, we told you it was an attic room. I'm beginning to realize that. Oh, but it's secluded. Isolated seems more fitting. It's not my idea, remember? Here. There you are. Say, that's a very roomy closet. That's the room. Oh. Well, do you want it or don't you? To be perfectly frank with you, I wouldn't... I mean, it does have a certain cozy charm that larger rooms might lack. Rent payable in advance two weeks. I'll be downstairs waiting. Good. And you, Jane, don't dawdle about. You have work to do, mind? Uh, yes, Auntie. I'll expect you downstairs very shortly. Don't take too long. Oh, Jane... Uh... Say, I'm not entirely sure I know where everything is in this capacious area. You'd better point things out to me. Well, there's nothing to show, really. There, there's the washstand, uh -huh. the, the bed, the chair. Uh-huh. Uh, what about towels and soap? Remember, charming lady, cleanliness is next to godliness. Oh, if I move any higher, I shall be as near to heaven as one can come in this mortal sphere. Do you always talk like this? Yes, yeah, certainly. Is there anything odd about my speech? Yes, you never seem to answer anything the way other people do. Oh, I've always made it a point to avoid being classified as one of the masses. I see. Uh, well, I'll go get your towel uh, and soap. Before you leave, uh, what about my clothes closet? I failed to see it. You're looking at it. That, that happens to be a coat hanger. Yes, I know. Jane, come down here. Oh, it's Annie. Oh, yes. uh, I'll see you later. Jane, do you hear me? Oh, will you please step aside and let me pass? <laughs> Yes, in due time. I, I have to go. Oh, now, surely a tiny little thing like you isn't going to try to push this huge hulk of mine around, are you? Uh, please. Mm. 
<laughs> Push harder. Oh, you, you beast. Be more specific. What kind of beast? Here, what's going on here? Your niece, madam. She deliberately launched a violent assault upon my poor defenseless frame. Oh, you... I, I never want to see you again, <laughs> ever. That's a long time. I mean it. I never want to see you again. Jane kept her resolve for several days, but before long she found herself forgiving him. She even accepted his invitation to attend the theater. After it was over, they strolled home in the warm evening over the darkened streets. Well, Jane, how did you like the play? Oh, Ben, I I've never seen anything like it in all my life. I, I thought it was wonderful. Oh, I'm glad for you. Well, didn't you think it was fine? It was adequate. Adequate? Yes, my dear. You take that scene with Hamlet, the one in which he reproaches himself for not keeping faith with his dead father. Well, that particular sequence called for the utmost subtlety. Oh, I thought the actor did it beautifully. Yes, he did, especially if he were auctioning some merchandise off. Jane, dear, those lines called for feeling. He didn't have it. All right. Do you know anyone who could have done them better? Yes. Who? Myself. You? I, an actor. Why not? Look, Ben, if you really do think you can act, why don't you try your hand at it instead of... of uh... Instead of loafing? Well, yes. Jane, listen to me. I've done more than my share of physical toil in the past. I was a bricklayer for years. Oh, really? Uh, well, look, Ben, why don't you go back into the trade? You could get a job right away. I just know you could. Mm, of course I could, but that's not my problem. No, dear Jane, I, I hate to be a disappointment to you, but I don't think I'll return to honest labor. Oh, that's all wrong. It's a matter of argument. Some people, Jane, are destined for the more menial tasks of the world. Others of us are placed here to exist on lofty planes. And you? You're one of these so-called higher geniuses? Modesty forbids me from ad admitting it, but I must bow to your accusation. Yes, Jane, I shall be a great actor. All right, Ben. If that's your honest feeling, good luck. Thank you. But do something about it. Don't just talk. And when are you going to start in being an actor, or whatever you plan to be? Well, uh, Tomorrow? I... Hardly. Day after? Well, I really don't see Next that. week? Oh, no. There you are, you see. Hey, just a moment. What are you lighting that match for? I wanted to see the color of your eyes when you were angry. Yes. Yes, they're even more lovely when you're upset. Oh, Ben. I don't know what to do about you. I do. Here, put your arms around me like this. Now, lift your face like this. Oh, please, Doctor, please. Oh, oh Ben. Ben. Come in. I want to talk to you. Oh, have my chair, madam. No, what I have to say won't take long. You make this sound most ominous. I want to get something settled once and for all. It's Jane. Ah, you may well be proud of her, madam. I am, and I want to stay that way. Jane was perfectly fine till you came around. Now she's changed. Oh, and am I the cause of this transformation? Yes. You mooing poems into her ear and talking those big words. Mm. You'd be a whole lot better off if you went out and got a good job somewhere. And I'm going to be perfectly frank with you. Frankness is a virtue in itself. You're not to see my niece anymore, do you understand? Madam, I appreciate the deep interest you display toward your charming niece. But I, for one, have never taken orders from anyone. And I most assuredly shall not start now. Then you refuse to leave the girl alone, hmm? Your choice of words is most awkward. Look, I have a much simpler solution to this problem. Why not leave the matter entirely up to Jane? Hmm? Is she downstairs? Don't you dare call her. Uh, Jane! Jane, would you please come up here? Oh, right away. Why must you drag the girl into this mess? I must say, you aren't very complimentary. Oh, did you want something, Ben? I... Oh, oh, Andy. Yes. Jane, dear, your aunt and I have just had a little discussion about you. About me? Yes. It seems your aunt questions the motives that prompt me to seek your company. She insists that I stop seeing you entirely. I don't quite understand. Jane, how do you honestly feel toward me? Well, I, uh, I think you're very nice and... Do you... Well, do you think you could learn to love me? Mm, I don't know. I, I haven't had... If I went to work, would that make any difference? Mm -hmm. I think it would. Very well. 
Jane dearest, would you marry me? What? You... I'm asking you to take my name, will you? Oh, but, but I... Don't I, you I, I, dare. Oh, Addie, then, then I should be honored to be your wife. And so they were married. At first, it was quite an ideal existence. They rented a small room some distance from Jane's aunt to help avoid future discords. Ben was a changed man. He went to work in a brokerage firm and took over the role of faithful provider. Jane was never happier in her entire life. Oh, Ben, dear, supper's ready. Huh? Oh, uh, I'll be right there. Oh, you're going to love it. Your very favorite food, roast pork, applesauce, and cherry pie. Well, what brought this special offering on? Oh, I just felt that we needed some bolstering of the spirits lately. Hmm? You haven't been up to your usual witty self for the past several days. Ben, are you feeling all right? I'm perfectly well, Jane. I'm hardly the type that gets physical ailments, I'm afraid. Well, there's something on your mind. Are you worried over money matters? We're going to get by all right in a few weeks. I'm learning how to manage much better on what you earn, and, well, it won't take long... I've never before... worried about money in the past, Jane, and I don't propose to start now. Then there is something on your mind. What is it? Oh, don't worry about it. Eat your food. But I have to worry. Ben, I... Are you unhappy with me? I love you more than I ever did. No, Jane, no. It, it's not you at all. Oh, well, then what is it? I have to know. Well, I... I guess we may as well face it. Jane, before you condemn me too much, remember the sort of life I led before I met you. Go on. I've never had a real home life till now. I've always been a nomad, wanderer, gypsy, or just loafer, if you will. Jane... I love you as much as I ever did, but this sudden transition is too much for me all at once. What are you trying to tell me, Ben? Jane, I've got to go away for a while. Anywhere. Alone? Alone. I can't say I understand, Ben, but if that's the way you feel, I won't try to stop you. Thank you, Jane. You won't have to worry about money. I'll send you some right along. How, how soon do you want to leave? Tomorrow. Is that too soon? No, Ben. It's not too soon. We pause briefly from our story, Dark Dwelling, starring Barry Sullivan, to bring you an important message from our government. Choose the career that offers all five. The U.S. Army offers you these five keys to a successful future. One, a career of service. In the Army, you'll be on a team with a tradition of patriotic service to the nation. Two, the right job for you. Scientific aptitude tests determine the job you're best suited for. Three, continuous training for planned advancement. Specialized training and educational courses prepare you for advancement. Then the Army's career plan assures you periodic promotions based on your skill and efficiency. Four, lifetime security. You as an Army man are guaranteed regular pay and liberal retirement benefits. In sickness, your medical care is provided without cost and your regular pay continues. Five, travel and recreation. In the Army, you'll enjoy the finest recreational facilities and opportunities for worldwide travel. Remember, you have 30 days vacation with pay each year. Yes, choose the career that offers all five. Get full details at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. The curtain rises on Act Two of Dark Dwelling, starring Barry Sullivan as Ben. Shortly after Ben had married Jane, he fell victim to his old wanderlust and asked her to let him go for a while. Jade gave in to his wish even though she didn't understand. Many weeks later, Jane was serving tea to her aunt, who had dropped in for a visit. I'm going to talk to you straight from the shoulder, Jane. I think you're deluding yourself. In what way? About this husband of yours. He's not coming back. He'll be back. No, oh, no, he won't. I know his type. And you can get a divorce in any court on grounds of desertion. He hasn't deserted me. Don't say that. Your very anger is proof that he has. 
In your heart, you think just as I do, but you won't admit it. Auntie, I like you very much, but if you're going to talk like that, I, I'll have to ask you to leave. Oh, very well, very well. And I wish you'd never met that man. I'll wager he doesn't even write to you. He does, too. And when did you hear from him last? I, uh, not long ago. How long? It was last month. <laughs> That's proof of how much he misses you. Why? Come in. Ben! Even you, dear madam, must admit that I'm a perfect gentleman. Imagine knocking on one's own door. Oh, Ben, oh, Ben. Jane, dear, my sweet. Oh. Did you miss me? Oh, you'll never know how much, Ben, never. Well, you <laughs> see, I won't be missed here. Goodbye. <laughs> What a breakfast. Ambrosia from the gods and nectar from the flowers. And here I thought it was just bacon and eggs. <laughs> <laughs> My practical Jane. Come over here. That's right. Uh, oh, no, stop. That's enough. No. Uh, ben, don't you think you'd better be on your way? Hmm? If you expect to get your old job back, you'd better be there early to create a good impression. Oh, I've made a change in my plans, Jane. I'm not going back there. But last night you said you would. Uh-huh. That was last night. I've given it much thought since then, and I've decided upon another course. Not acting. Yes, you've hit it right on the head. Ben, you know how I feel about it. It's fine, but if you can do it... Uh, Janie, listen to me. I'll give it a try. If it doesn't go, then I'll go back to bricklaying or anything else. But I've got to find out for myself. Give me one week, Jane. That's all I ask. One week. Mr. Philip Henslow, I believe? Yes. Mr. Henslow, I understand that you are the owner of the Rose Theatre. Right. I further understand that you are active far beyond that. Mm, you seem to know a lot. You, I have been told, do the actual casting in the plays that appear in your theatre. Well, what about it? I want a part in one of your plays. With that face? <laughs> Old man. What did you call me? Old man, that's what you are. Old man, I may not have the coy mannerisms of your puppets, but I dare say I can read as well as any. Yes. Yeah. Read this manuscript. Oh, the Spanish tragedy. Uh, what part do you want me to read? Hieronymus. Hieronymus huh? What outcries pluck me from my bed and chill my throbbing heart with trembling fear, which never danger yet could daunt before? More? Alas, it is Horatio, my sweet son. Oh, no, but he that was my son. Who hath slain my son? What savage monster not of human kind? Enough, enough, enough. Uh, I would say that was hardly a fair trial, sir. You start tomorrow. Get out till then. So Ben became an actor. And he was good, but Ben lacked the handsome presence necessary for the leading roles. And he was never content to play second to anyone. After a few months, he went back to Henslow. Oh, you again. Mm. What now? I have a complaint. You usually do. I've been with you nearly a year now, and I still have, haven't had one good role that would give me the prominence I deserve. Mm, takes time. I can't wait for that day. Well, what am I supposed to do? Give me the parts I want. I'll be honest with you. This should be a rare treat. From what I hear, I shall be the first person you've ever done that with. I've fired better actors than you for less than that. I've grown tired of posturing around the stage. I've got other plans. Such as... Uh... Taking my place? Oh, no. You've had years of practice insulting your workers. No one could fill your shoes in that respect. Thank you. You are really too flattering to an old man. I've decided to be a playwright. Mm, just like that. Mm. Yes. You are probably unaware of it, but I've been rewriting all the plays we've been doing, and they're infinitely better after I've gone over them. Your quiet modesty fascinates me. Thank you. In the meantime, I've written some plays of my own. I shall let you have the privilege of producing them for me. And if I refuse? Oh, no, you won't. Not if you read them. Here, here are two for you to go over. Young man, I have a big surprise for you. Yes? I've already read your two plays. Your wife sent them to me some time back. She did? Yeah. I've decided to purchase them both. Tonight's the night, Jane. If this play is a hit, we'll never need money again. It will be, don't worry. Oh, I'm not worried. It's one of the best I've done. Just wait till you see it. Uh, Ben, would you mind terribly if I saw it some other night instead? What are you talking about? Well, I'm dreadfully tired, and the strain would be too much for me, I know. Oh, I'd merely get everybody else nervous. 
<laughs> please, please go by yourself, and I'll see it when I'm in better condition. Well, this is ridiculous. I, I know it is, dear, but I feel it's better this way. So, you hurry home and... But I really don't think, Jane... <laughs> Please, Ben. Well, all right. But don't you go to sleep till I get back. I won't, I promise. And now, you'd better hurry along. Yes, I should be there early tonight. All right, Jane. Kiss me for luck. Let's have another toast, good old Ben. Uh, why? <laughs> Merely because I wrote the best play in town? Surely you can think of a better excuse than that. <laughs> May I join you? Philip Penslow. Why, old man, even you are welcome tonight. Sit down. Thank you. <laughs> Gentlemen. May I propose a toast to the scholarly man at my left? <laughs> Seriously, without Mr. Henslow's invaluable aid and cutthroat tactics, I never would have had the incentive to write a play such as tonight's. <laughs> it is most refreshing to an old man to see that your charming self-effacement has managed to weather success. Uh, but before you take all the credit yourself, I should like to compliment the person who has had so much to do with all this. Where's your wife? Good Lord, what time is it? Past one, 15 minutes to be exact. Well, gentlemen, you must excuse me. I have to hurry home. <laughs> one more toast. Ben. Well, all right, but then that's the last. Jane. Yes? Should I turn on the light? Doesn't make any difference. It'll be dawn soon. Well, I try to hurry home, but you know how those things turn out. Yes, I know. I won't bore you with all the details, but the play was a wonderful success. I heard all about it, Ben. Oh, you did? Yes. But I had to hear it from others. Oh, Jane, it wasn't my fault. I, I begged you to go with me. That's not a good excuse, Ben. You've usually been able to do better. Oh, please, Jane, this isn't like you. Don't, don't be vindictive now that success is really here. Oh, I'm not vindictive, Ben, and... I don't blame you. Then everything's all right? Not quite. It's been like this for some time, Ben. There are too many things in your life that come before me. I've asked you to settle down before. I know now that you never will. I know, too, that I can't go on this way. Jane, listen to me. I promise you... Oh, you, you promised before, Ben. I think you'd better leave now. Do you realize what you're saying? Too well. Please go, Ben. All right, then. I'll do as you wish. I'm leaving. Goodbye. Goodbye. Ben discovered that Jane really meant it. Late one night, after a futile evening trying to forget her, Ben went wearily to his room. He went to his desk and began to write. His pen began to express what he felt. Finally, as sleep began to overtake him, he finished. Gathering up the sheets of paper, he put on his hat and coat and hurried out into the night and headed to his old apartment. Who's there? It's me, Jane. Ben. It's almost dawn. What's wrong? I won't stay, I promise. I just want to give you something I wrote. Here you are, Jane. I'll go. No, just a minute. Ben, read it to me, please. All right, Jane. Drink to me only with thine eyes, and I will pledge with mine. Or leave a kiss but in the cup, and I'll not look for wine. The thirst that from the soul doth rise doth ask a drink divine. But might I of Jove's nectar sup, I would not change for thine. Oh, Ben. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Goodbye. I know, Ben, not goodbye. Good night. Jane. Jane, do you mean it? Yes, Ben. I think we can still work it out. And they did work it out. Jane and Ben Johnson. Yes, the man who wrote that beautiful poem was Ben Johnson. The same Ben Johnson who contributed so much to the theater and our dramatic literature. Among the immortal plays he wrote were Valpony, Catiline, Sejanus, The Sad Shepherd, and Every Man in His Humor. Yes, 
Ben Johnson truly deserves his place alongside his good friend and fellow playwright, William Shakespeare. Curtain Falls and the final act of Dark Dwelling. Our star, Barry Sullivan, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. Young men, the Army Medical Department offers you a future. Now the Medical Service Corps has openings for optometrists, civil, chemical, and sanitary engineers, and men trained in the sciences allied to medicine. If you have a degree, you may be able to qualify for a commission and the career opportunities it provides. Pay, allowances, and retirement benefits are attractive. To see if you can qualify, write the Surgeon General, Department of the Army, Washington 25, D.C. Once again, our star, Barry Sullivan, and our producer. Barry, I'm glad you managed to join us before you left on vacation. You know what happened, C.P.? Yes, they told me at Metro Golden Mayor. You had your reservations at Palm Springs and had to break them for more work on Outriders. C.P., I'm dead. Three pictures in a row. Now for my vacation. <laughs> Let's hear about those pictures. Well, the first and the one being shown around right now is called Tension. I made this with Audrey Tata. The next two, they're both still unreleased, are in Technicolor. Nancy Goes to Rio with uh, Jane Powell and Ann Southern. And the other, the one I just finished, is called Outriders with Joel McRae, Arlene Dahl, Claude Jarman Jr. Wonderful people. They've all been on our show here. They certainly are wonderful people. And say, do you know Jimmy Whitmore? He's in the picture, too. He's the kid that does such a great job in Dory Sherry's wonderful production of Battleground. Why, sure I know him. Both of you first took up riding when you started Outriders, didn't you? Yeah, that's right, C.P. Neither of us had ever been on a horse before. But Joel McRae, he was wonderfully helpful. He coached us, and right now we ride like mad. Could it be that you're going western on us? And believe me, I can't wait for the next one. That is, after this vacation. <laughs> well, I know you're anxious to get started, and thanks for being with us. This has been a great place to start my vacation, C.P. Always a lot of fun. Now, tell me, who's playing next, C.P.? We have both a great story and comedian, Barry, and ladies and gentlemen, the star will be Sterling Holloway, and the story is called The Odyssey of Horace Glick. So don't miss it. I'll be listening in Palm Springs, I hope. Good luck, C.P. Thanks, and goodbye, Barry. Be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when Sterling Holloway will star in a hilarious comedy, The Odyssey of Horace Glick. Until then... Thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. Barry Sullivan appeared with the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The script was by Bill Dench, with the music of Eddie Dunstetter. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking.